Hello and welcome everyone, my name is Zoe. Some of you might know me from the Overwatch League or from Hearthstone, Starcraft 2 or World of Warcraft tournaments in the past, but today I am not here to talk esports, I'm not here to commentate or host, I'm here to craft together with all of you. So uh, yeah, you guys should have gotten a list of the materials we will be using today and together we will be sculpting a tiny little Pachimari figurine out of Super Sculpey. Um, on the list should be Super Sculpey, which should look like this uh, flesh meat colored. This is the Super Sculpey original. There is a soft version, a firm version. The firm version being really firm, uh, that's the, the gray one. I tend to mix the two of them just to get the right consistency because Super Sculpey as a material is very, very interesting. It doesn't harden uh, like by just leaving it out in the open uh, with the air. So you actually have to bake it for it to firm up. And that means that it's pliable and moldable and workable for months, years, probably. I mean, I haven't, haven't tried that, but I, I'm just gonna assume it's gonna last for some time. Um, yeah, or it's gonna keep for some time anyway. Uh, I am mixing some of the firm one with some of the soft one to get the right consistency. And in the end, that has that this color, so it's just like a, a, a reddish, a pinkish gray. That's what I'm going for. Uh, for me, that's the right consistency to sculpt. You just have to see whatever works for you. Now, you have to knit this dough, this super sculpty, for quite some time for it to be nice and soft and pliable. Otherwise, it gets crumbly and a little bit weird as you're working with it. So you kind of want it to be warmed up a bit. Uh, obviously, if you have warm hands, that works out quite well. However, later in the video, I can show you how that's sometimes a little bit of an issue because um, if it gets too soft, you destroy work you've previously done because it just, it moves around, there's all sorts of issues anyway. That's that's a topic for about 10 minutes into this video. We are going to make a Pachi Mari sculpt with the Super Sculpey and we're gonna fill it up with aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Aluminum foil with alu foil. <laughs> Um, we do that for several reasons. One is that obviously Super Sculpey is, well, it's, it's not the most expensive material, but hey, any penny you can save, that's, that's great. So we don't want to use that much material. So the head, the body, the head, I don't know. I mean, it's an onion, right? Uh, the, the, the head of it, of the Pachimari, which is also the main body, um, will be quite thick. So we're using a uh, aluminum foil ball with a diameter of about one inch, um, or uh, you can also just print out these Pachimaris I drew up for you. And with those, you can use those as a scale guidance. So we want the aluminum foil to be about as big as the inside circle of the face of the Pachimari. So uh, you just go ahead and shape that. That can be round, you can make it a little bit oval, whatever works for you, I leave mine round. And then afterwards I will take the Super Sculpey, which I've been netting for some time, and I will flatten it out a little bit with my hands and wrap it around this aluminum foil ball. Uh, I am currently working on this. This is a sculpting wheel and I put aluminum foil alu foil uh, on top of it as well just to keep the surface nice and clean um it is very heavy uh which i like however you might just want to use anything really honestly you just kind of want to have a hard surface a firm surface which ideally would be spinning around since you want to move it if you can't have your surface spin around I suggest that you layer a bunch of aluminum foil into like a square, which is going to be your workspace on top of your workspace. So you can just move the foil so you don't have to uh, either move around your entire workspace or you have to grab, uh, grab the sculpt and potentially ruin parts of the sculpt by moving it around too much with your hands. So now that we have that set up all sorted out, we continue forming this headpiece. Now this is going to take some time, all right? 
Maybe in a video it's gonna look like this only took me five minutes, but truth be told, I was rolling that Sculpey around for about 25 minutes until I had what I considered the perfect onion, <laughs> because we love them onions. So you wanna just make sure that you get this part right. Uh, so take your time with shaping it. You can always just restart. Uh, make sure that the aluminum ball is nicely and tightly wrapped. You don't wanna have any air bubbles in there. Um, yeah, but if you have a really nice round aluminum ball, uh, ball, that should really help you mold your clay around that. Uh, you can start off with a circle. I went straight into Onion Town, but you can also just start with a circle and then start like molding it up a little bit and uh, widen it out on the bottom part of it. Because of course, uh, if you're looking at those Pachimaris, they are wide at the bottom and thinner on the top, obviously. So a complete ball would not, like a complete circle would not suffice to make a Pachimari head slash body. <laughs> so yeah, just uh, work around uh, with your Sculpey and see um, where it gets you. Now, another reason why we're also filling it with aluminum is not just to save a material, but also because of the bake. As I said, this kind of material is hardening through baking. And if you put it in the oven, obviously the thinner parts will bake quicker than the thicker parts. And if a sculpture or a sculpey in general, if that is underbaked, it gets really brittle and it's it's just it's just bad. It's bad news. <laughs> uh, you can break your scalp pretty quickly if it's underbaked, and if it's overbaked, things just burn. So they actually will get discolored. And uh, even if you have really good paint, sometimes you can still kind of see that through. So we want to avoid that. It can also blister up if it's overbaked. So you got to be really really careful. And if we're looking at that Pachimari figurine. The tentacles, obviously, on the tips, they are very thin there. So you want to make sure that at least the thickest part, because we wouldn't be able to bake those at the same time. Otherwise, you won't have that filled with aluminum. Um, if you're really fancy, you could also fill in some of the tentacles, but I don't, I don't think that is necessary here. Um, so we just go with the top part being filled with aluminum and then we go from there. Uh, the baking time, I will repeat that again at the end of the uh, video, is about 15 minutes per a quarter of an inch. That's uh, six millimeters, I think, will be the conversion for that. That is roughly what you have to keep in mind when you're baking it. And again, just stick with it, honestly. You don't want to walk away from it because it, it, it goes really quickly from under to over. So you just want to you want to stay with it. You want to stay with it. Now, I am, of course, still working with my Sculpey to try and shape that onion. That process can be done with only your fingers. You can also use whatever uh, mat you're using, whatever um, uh, surface you're working on. Uh, make sure it's really nice and even. That way you can just roll it on top of that and get that even, even surface. Now, you want to be accurate here. It might look like I'm overdoing it with accuracy by just going over and over and over it, but this is the base of your entire sculpt. So if that one is wonky, the whole thing is gonna be wonky and we just don't want that. So try to work as neat, as clean, as accurate as you possibly can in those very first steps because yes, all the material is still very moldable and pliable and workable later, uh, as I said, it's not gonna firm up until you actually put it in the oven. However, um, if you start attaching other things to it, it's really, really hard to go back to the first parts and sort them out. So you wanna, you wanna make sure that each and every step, uh, you you got it right. So it might take some time, but don't be discouraged if this very first step of your sculpt is just gonna, you know, maybe it takes an hour. What else? I'll be here with you. I'm sticking with it. Uh, it did take me more than twenty minutes as well as I was just shaping it around and around and around. And once more, it's really, really helpful to have a two scale uh, picture of what you want to sculpt. So you can draw something up beforehand and just get a good idea when you um, doing more elaborate sculpting, which actually requires like arms and limbs and whatnot, where you would do the skeleton, not just with foil, but also with actual wire. Um, it really, really helps to have 
as something drawn up because you can you can do the skeleton work with the wire and the aluminum foil you can put it on top of your drawing and make sure that everything is to scale nothing is off because uh, that stuff is going to be really really tricky to fix later in the process so again just work as accurate as you can it is a sculpting so that means it just can't be rushed you know just gonna take your good time however this segment is also limited in time so we do have to speed it up eventually and uh, you know kind of fast forward past the onion part uh, you can always just go back and re-watch uh, what i'm doing right now so yeah i cut out my pattern my, my pachimari um and just use that constantly, always checking in again to see where we are. Do I have the right thickness, the right height? Uh, it just makes it so much easier to have something to work off of. Once you're done or at least happy and satisfied with how your main head slash body is looking like, does it have the right height, the right width? If you're happy with everything it is and uh, you know, if you worked to scale and you feel like it's about as accurate as you can get, we can move on to the next step, which is of course, the second part of the body. There is only two parts of that body, really. We made it really easy with the Pachimari, didn't we? <laughs> so yeah, we're moving on to the arms slash legs slash tentacles. <laughs> and uh, for that, we once more are going to take some of our Sculpey and we start rolling that out into a long, thick string. I don't know what the right word for that is. It's a, 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 a very long cylinder, a tube, maybe. Let's go with that. Not being a native is every once in a while very difficult. <laughs> if you want to explain something, you just can't find the right word. Anyway, I mean, you see on screen what I'm doing right now. I'm rolling it out and I'm trying to be as even as possible. Uh, we are going to use that for the legs slash arms. Let's just call it arms for now. Uh, just be sticking with one thing. Um, yeah, so you want it to be as even as possible because obviously you want all of the arms to be even in thickness so just take your time with it um start rolling it out rolling it out until you've about this much length and then we're gonna proceed uh, so now i'm also getting my tools ready i am using sculpting tools uh which are basically dentistry tools i know that sounds crazy and i know what you're seeing on your screen right now might give you uh some cold sweats because we're all too familiar or some of us are very familiar with uh, those kind of tools and usually they're not very pleasant right uh but uh we're gonna we're gonna associate them with something nice now which is the joy of sculpting so we're gonna repurpose um those kind of tools for our sculpting but honestly there is so much stuff you can use, which you just have as your household items. You don't necessarily need sculpting tools to get started in sculpting. I started off by using uh, my paint brushes. So I would use the back of it for uh, to replace those kind of round metal um, thingy bajiggies. Like, I don't know if they even have a name, but uh, those sculpting tools, I replaced them with uh, the back end of my paintbrushes since they come in a lot of different sizes and also of course the paintbrush usually is very smooth the surface is smooth so you can really repurpose those kind of tools uh, as well as for example just a simple ruler you can use those they have sharp edges they, they are straight um, they have flat surfaces as well so these are all things you can actually use What's sculpting? And during the sculpt, I will every once in a while just switch one in, <laughs> uh, one of those household tools. So you can just get an idea of how you will be using those as well. So back to our agenda of the Pachi Mori. I'm still rolling out those legs, trying to make it as even as I possibly can. And we need two even, uh, evenly sized in length uh, stripes for that. And that will make out our four arms. What you're thinking, but it's just two. Well, yes, but we actually are going to cross them on top of each other. Uh, that way we can ensure that they really are even and we don't have to like kind of mend it in the middle of, on like four different places. We can just have one nice blend in the middle and that should all be even in sizing and thickness. Uh, so yeah, this is what we're going to do. So we just cut out those two uh, even in length uh, tubes 
and then maybe work the ends a little bit so you don't have to do that later you can just like round it up a little bit you can just dab onto the material honestly it's unless you're using the very firm version uh, for me like mixing the firm with the softer one really makes it easy for me to just dip on it with my you know my body temperature finger and that already will blend it so it's really really easy to blend that material now once you've done that and you took measures uh find the middle of one of those tubes mark it and then you will cut out a little like indenture i think that's the right word <laughs> like yeah you just want to cut out a little bit from the bottom piece now we call it and then you could also cut out some of the top piece don't really have to depending on how much of a dent you made in the bottom piece and once you've cut that out you can now just lay the other one inside of it so you can just really interlock those two sets of arms and that way you really don't have to do much of the blending work which otherwise would be required to like get the thickness right you would have to remove material so this way you make it really really easy for yourself as you can just overlap them and again that material is very very blendable so it is also very sticky which means if you put those two parts on top of each other uh, over time just by you holding it it will really mesh together so you don't actually have to do a lot of like work in order to put two parts together and make them stick indefinitely you definitely want to you know add some pressure on it and, and and work around the edges a little bit but you don't have to be worried about it all falling apart like this material is actually really really easy to use now once you overlap them don't worry about the blending in the middle just yet first i want you to kind of pose your arms what do you want your pachimori to look like you can really emote with those tentacles uh, as you can have him hold on to something or to someone if you want to go the lovey-dovey route as well uh you can have him wave you can have him you know lean on his little onion head there is just so many ways you can make this really creative and quirky and fun and you can really make this one your own i'm going for the very standard like that kind of pachimari i don't even know how you would call that pose but that's what we're gonna go just your uh everyday average tentacle pose that's a sentence i didn't think i would say today <laughs> so yeah this is just kind of the this s shape i'm gonna go with you can either uh, bend it up or you can bend it down again it's all up to you and you can play around since that material can be changed around as much as you want really just have fun with it see if you like it or not and uh, play around with it and once you found a pose you feel is right you can now go ahead and uh, just do that to all the tentacles or you can pose them individually of course that is a possibility too but i keep it very vanilla i keep it very basic with mine so i just gonna have all of the arms do the same kind of pose now once i figured out what that pose would look like i now start blending the arms together you know the gaps we have from overlapping those two tubes like all the bits here in the middle these are the ones you now want to start blending and for that you can use either your sculpting tools or your fingers depending on just how dainty or sausage your fingers might be might vary honestly um i just see how much i can get done with my fingers because in sculpting it's actually really nice to just work with your hands for as much as you can um, you just start really blending those middle parts out with your fingers at the beginning and then when you try to act uh, or work with a little more detail you now can start using your tools to really like blend those middle bits together and it doesn't take much force and also i now want to remind you that when you're holding this kind of material the part where you hold it you know it's going to change its shape obviously if you're pressing onto it too hard if you're holding it so you want to be really really mindful of where do you put your fingers and how hard are you actually going to hold it whilst working on another part of your sculpture and many if you're doing blending work where you feel like oh, i'm getting so much done on this side and then you like swap it around or you like just turn it around and then you see that now like the whole entire other side or wherever you held it has uh dents from your fingers it definitely will show your um fingerprint in it so you need to be very mindful of like how you're gonna work the material how you're gonna hold the material as you're working on all these different parts but yeah so for now we're still in the early stages so in case something were to happen to your clay model don't fret can still fix it as i said it is very moldable so that can be a good thing as well as a bad thing but usually there's 
almost nothing you can't save some way or another when you um you know f something up in the middle of the process so don't be too alarmed in case that does happen it happens to all of us all the time uh, a lot of people also just put it down when they work on certain parts if you just want to put it down on whatever um surface you're using uh, to make your sculpt it might help you at the beginning to just kind of work from the top first and then worry about the bottom a little later i like to always also take care of the bottom part of the model because it is a figurine right so you will lift it up you will look at it and people will just see it so you don't want to you don't wanna have a messy bottom i felt very baking showed in it soggy bottom anyway <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, yeah, so now you just keep on blending, keep on uh, shaping those tentacles. Make sure that they, they go a little pointy towards the end since the tentacles are not just like random tubes, right? So at the beginning, you really want to start shaping those end bits. And honestly, that's just like a very, very simple process. Um, don't worry if, if it gets like too elongated, if you feel like one tentacle is now a lot longer than the other you can always just like kind of press it back or you can always nip off a little bit of material but keep in mind if you worked accurately beforehand all of those arms should be even in their length and in their size and that means if you take something off it will not be even again this is something you can fix however uh by posing if you feel like oh like this one just kind of looks a little off just give it another little curve like you can you can kind of cheat your way around it but yeah so you want to make sure that this uh straight part at the end you just kind of like spin it like this like so until you get like the pointy bit and it blends really well it makes it really really easy you just want to be careful that you don't make it too thin right because again the baking will be very breakable so we want to have everything still as even as possible without getting too thin and once more you can just use any kind of tools you like in this very process which is honestly a little bit fun as well it's a bit of an adventure you can just see how many household materials you can you know make work for your sculpt and honestly that's kind of how you start off because you don't just go out and buy all of your tools all at once um that just in case you don't like sculpting in the end that might not be the best um you know use of your finances <laughs> anyway i'm not here to talk about finances we're talking about tentacles arms let's go with that one for onions hmm and uh yeah I'm, I'm as you can see i'm using my fingers a lot to do the shaping since you can really use those kind of parts to like get the curve right or you like make little angles with your fingers and then you just like bend the clay uh, or the sculpting material over your your arms you can also use uh, a pencil or like a brush to like get the curvature right on every single piece and most of all even on every single piece uh, we will put the head on every once in a while as we're working through the process of you know shaping and also posing those arms because we want the head to fit so every once in a while just take that little onion and put it on top of it and just see if it fits you can press it down a tiny little bit you will see that it will stick to it very very quickly so you want to make sure that it doesn't stick too much and you don't have to like kind of scrape it off of the bottom part again but yeah every once in a while as i said just put it on just to see that you're working within the right scale that the measurements are right that you're not um you know that you are leaving or you're allowing for enough room for the head to really really be in there as well um you just continue molding and folding your legs now it is usually better to get it as neat and as clean as you can so you only have to do detail work once you assemble the two different pieces the reason being once more that you need to hold on to something right so if you would attach it right now that would still be so much blending and so much shaping that i will need to do and the only part where i could hold on to my pachimari would be the head so in the process of me working on the not detail work but on, on like some some rougher areas on the bottom bit um that would probably make me kind of deshape his head just by holding on to it and even if you don't press down just by holding it there will over time because of the warmth of your hand there will over time um just 
there will be dents and stuff left in whatever you're holding so you kind of just want to avoid that and make sure that doesn't happen to you you're saving yourself a lot of work by uh keeping it separate for some time until you're happy with the base shape and if you're looking at the pachimori there isn't that much detail work the only thing which is left to do are these uh suckers they're called you actually looked that up uh, the suction cups are uh, called suckers um or people call them that and now I'm questioning what I looked up <laughs> Google you betrayed me <laughs> anyway um this this called them suction cups so so we're not offensive I guess um so those suction cups there isn't that many of them there is going to be three per arm so that's not that much detail work and then we have the line work and that's pretty much it honestly so it's not that much detail work so all you have to focus on is get the shape of the tentacles nice and even so i keep on switching between calling it legs arms and tentacles but you know it's um whatever <laughs> it's what it is now once you're happy with the shape as is you can now attach the head to the legs which is a very very exciting part because this is kind of where it starts coming together and now you can really see like the base shape of your pachimari now you can see if you work accurate if everything looks proportionate it might seem to you that you know it's just an onion and some some legs it can't be that hard but honestly sometimes very sim simple sculpts are so much harder to do simplicity is actually really hard to execute because you have nowhere to hide it needs to be accurate and it needs to look right like if a circle isn't round you can tell very simply like very quickly this is why most of my artwork is very scribbly and there's just so much going on so you can't really see um all the little flaws <laughs> in there so you know it's a little trick of the trade but it's certainly working but with something like a pachimari the shapes are very simple and that's why you need to take your time and get them right so don't be scared to just like keep on adjusting keep on working on it keep on blending uh as of right now i'm still mainly using my head for the majority of the work because you honestly don't need the tools unless you're going in for the detail work and then once you're going in for the detail work there is plenty of different things you can use uh, it might also be helpful for you to go um to your kitchen and take some like um like those really pointy little grilling forks uh, or like a, a fondue fork works really good I've, I've worked with that i don't know how many americans have fondue equipment at home but i mean i'm swiss so it is our national dish i kind of have to <laughs> have to have that um you can also work with needles different sizes of needles or knitting needles maybe maybe you yourself or uh someone from your family or a friend or a neighbor has some knitting needles uh those are great as well uh crocheting needles work really well as well for sculpting so honestly the world is your oyster you can go crazy creative on the use of any kind of equipment that you have available to you there is a lot of things you can make use of in the world of sculpting now once you feel you got your bases right the head is just right the bottom is just right that sounds so weird uh, you can put it down again on the platform and just kind of work from there not touching it just make sure that everything is proportionate and uh, yeah once that step is done we can finally move on to my favorite part which is the detail work and with that we are going to start off with the face so once you put the final touches on the body as well as the arms slash legs slash tentacles of your pachimari we can now move on to my favorite part which is detail work and we're starting off with those suction cups on the arms uh for that i'm gonna use my um fancy tool i don't really know the name of i just assume it's a sculpting tool and has a ball on the other end now if you don't have that sculpting tool at home what you can use now is the back of a paintbrush it just needs to be round anything which is round in shape uh, is what you can use here and honestly that almost works better than the sculpting tool because uh, depending on the brush it's going to be a lot wider so we are now going to add the uh, the, the dents for where we put the suction cup so this is not going to be the final look this is just going to be us preparing the way for the suction cup to be stuck onto those arms and we're going to work our way from the top to bottom where the top one is the smallest circle then the middle one is the middle and the 
last one is the largest in size. Now, given that the Pachimari is going to be uh, put down, like he sits down, the bottom part's not really visible, but we're going to do it anyway for good measure and just in case some of that uh, like lowest of that biggest suction cup is kind of showing as you're um, putting the sculpture down it's just nice to still have the details also on the bottom but mind you because of the weight of the sculpt itself uh if we're putting it down a lot that bottom one will just flatten out completely and that's fine like don't you worry about that that's just just kind of just kind of what it is so uh yeah you can once more use this little drawing i made which you hopefully just downloaded and um printed out you can just use that as guidance for the sizing like how big you want those suction cups you can kind of see how how large you have to you know mark them on your pachimari and also of course um just go with whatever feels right looking at those um tentacles like how wide did you make them how much space do you actually have because you don't want to have uh, a suction cup which is like way overpowers your tentacle <laughs> so many weird sentences i'm saying today anyway you're just gonna repeat this uh, denting process or like this um, setup process for those suckers uh, on every single one of your tentacles. And once you're done with that and you're happy with your work, feel free to just put it down, kind of look at it from further away, spin it. You know, give it, give it a good, give it a good spin. I love that spinning wheel, by the way. <laughs> it's just a perfect tool for those at-home ghost moments. You know what I mean right anyway um yeah so once you're happy with uh where you marked it ye, we can now go ahead and actually start adding those suction cups and for that we once more go back to our super sculpting materials since now we have to roll out some more long lines and this time of course a lot thinner than what we did previously for the um, tentacles so for those suction cups you once more have to roll out your super sculpty and this time a lot thinner of course than what we previously rolled out for those tentacles but again we want to make sure that it's nice and even and now you're just taking any which tool you can use a sculpting tool or you can uh, basically just use a real knife or you can use a uh, uh, your, your um, ruler like just anything which is kind of like cuts straight and you're cutting off small little uh what will turn into looking like little cubes but actually you want you want small little balls that will that's what we want so you cut off the smallest pieces first those are for the top part of our tentacles and they are the smallest ball so make sure you have four even small pieces and then you move to the middle section so we need four pieces for that and they're slightly bigger so you have to cut off slightly more material for those and then the last one of course once again slightly bigger slightly more material and once you cut it all off you can start rolling them into perfectly little balls you can just use the palm of your hand for that it's very very easy now i start assembling them immediately but if you want to make it easier on yourself and make sure that all of your little suction cups are actually even in size or at least like the four top ones are even, the four middle ones are even, and the four bottom ones are even. You can just roll them out first, like line them up next to each other before you attach them, and you can make sure that all of them are even in size. And if they're not, you can just add material or take some material off of it again, just to ensure that all of your suction cups you're putting onto your clay model are actually even. Now, in order to put it on, as you saw, very simple again, you literally just take it you stick it on and it will stick pretty well so you don't even need to apply much pressure in order to make that work so you just kind of push it in there flatten it down a little bit because you don't want it to like stick out like all round it, it needs to be kind of flattened so that's that's the kind of look you want to go for now at this point you need to be a little careful because now the more you touch it the flatter it becomes and then it's going to be really hard as it's kind of melding or melting into that arm so at one point you can't really take them out anymore and that also means that if they get really really flat it's really hard to like build them back up and we do want to have them coming out a little bit it shouldn't be just like a a, a flat kind of kind of thing because then what's the point of all the work we just done <laughs> so uh yeah you just work from one uh, suction cup to another until you're done with all of them so this is just a little nitty-gritty uh kind of process which we have to go through but at least it is very simple and it just kind of rinse and repeat now there are different ways you can attach it with as well uh, every once in a while i also use the back of a paintbrush and uh, kind of like 
dip into it, into the, the lint bar. I'm actually gonna, as I'm sculpting in the video, I'm also gonna sculpt here. So I'm gonna do this. And then I'm like dipping it in like, like so until it sticks. And then I put it onto the clay model. That would give it like this kind of actual suction cup shape, which can work as well. So just, you know, you can get a little creative. You don't have to stick to the formula just because I showed you how my Pachimori looks like, like your Pachimori can look however it wants. Different is beautiful. So just do whatever feels right. Um, that is definitely also a way to do it and that one won't require you to like actually use the fingertips so it might be a little easier and you don't have to make the indenture like quite as deep as I just did in order to make it work but uh yeah you just go ahead and move on from one tentacle to another always making sure that they're as even as possible at the beginning everything will look a little messy but don't worry about it as soon as we're adding some more detail and do some cleanup work which is always required at the end of these kind of sculptures um once that's done it's gonna look better trust me it's a process <laughs> so most of the sculpts like i don't want to share any pictures of the progress for like at least a few hours because it just kind of looks like not good doesn't look good so now i'm just like oh i don't want people to think i don't know what i'm doing so I, i'd rather just show you the finished product <laughs> um you can uh put your uh, pachimori down at any time also just to make sure that it looks good from further away it's always good to kind of take some distance or put some distance between you and your work same goes for drawing you know sometimes you need to literally take a step back and uh, take a look at it from those different angles or just step away altogether. If you're really unhappy with whatever your work is looking like, sometimes it actually works to just step away altogether, like have a snack, have a coffee, go for a walk, and then come back. And every once in a while, you just go like, oh, it wasn't that bad. I just got like so hard focused on it that I didn't like it anymore because it's all you see, right? Like you see all the little flaws, you have an image in your head, which is exactly how you want it to look like. And then you can get a little bit too set in that. So yeah, every once in a while, just take a step back, do some stretching, that's important too, because you know, when you do a sculpting, you're very often just hunched over your work and that's hurting after a little bit. So you want to make sure to give yourself enough breaks. Uh, you want you want to be as rested as possible during the sculpting process. Don't, don't want to deal with shaky hands or anything. So yeah, just take your time. We now reached the last suction cup, which is the one at the bottom. And just like I said at the beginning uh, of this process, you know, like you're gonna put it down a lot. They're gonna flatten out quite a bit. They're gonna really blend in. So you won't really be seeing them, but you know, we had to do it for good measure just because. Now at any moment, obviously always just like look at the whole thing and see if you messed up everything, uh, anything by holding it wrong or a little bit too hard. Like is everything still even? And if not, just like kind of dab it out, you know, dab it out a little bit um, to make sure that the surface is nice and smooth. It doesn't have any dents because I will be showing, uh, you can't really hide any of that with paint. Again, this is a simple kind of, uh, um, it, it's a simple shape, it's a simple form, so any kind of mistakes will show very quickly. Now, um, if you printed this out, what you can do now in order to get the face started is actually just cut the face out. That's right, we just cut into this uh, printout and we'll cut that face out, uh, which we'll just use as a little guide in order to draw the face on. So you don't have to do any guessing work. Uh, at this point, it would also be helpful for you to grab a needle or any pointy tool, you know, any anything you have, which which is pointy enough to uh, poke through paper. That is what you want right now. So once you've cut out the face, you can see where you want to position it. You want to have it a little higher up, a little further down. Just make sure that it's uh, nice and center of where you want it. Now, as you can see, it looks like it's overly big, but it actually isn't since it's a 2D, uh, 2D surface stretched over a 3D surface. So you want to kind of like bend it into its right uh, pose or its right shape. You've got to make sure that it doesn't move around whilst you do that so that the lines are actually even. Right? Does that make sense? I don't know. It seemed like a very long sentence to explain something. Basically, what I'm saying is 
Get yourself a tool, uh, something pointy or just something you can draw with. You can honestly even get like... No, actually you can't. I wanted to just get a pencil, but no, don't do that. You're actually going to discolor the clay. So uh, now you're just going to hold down the paper, make sure that it doesn't move, and you can just kind of dot around the outside of it. Just stay as close as you can, so you just kind of use this as your pattern as you're going around it. Once more, make sure to hold on to that paper so it doesn't move around and then you're kind of losing track of where you are. That would be very unfortunate. Now, once you're done with all of that uh, groundwork and it doesn't need to be very deep, you just need to get a very rough idea of where the face will be located. We're gonna need it out uh, in a little bit, but first you just wanna get a rough uh, starting point so you know where where your working area is. So don't go too deep because you have to fix it if you go too deep. Another really brilliant sentence uh, from yours truly. Anyway, so yeah, now we also wanna quickly mark where the eyes and the mouth are. For that, I'm gonna take the most pointy of our tools uh, I can find so that we can actually mark where the eyes are. Now, you don't have to go overboard in marking it. You can just mark the the middle of the eye and then you can draw it out afterwards. Uh, once more, try to make sure that the paper doesn't come off. Mine definitely fell off, so I was a bit angry at myself. Uh, you can, yeah, you can reattach it, of course, but it's just gonna be a little bit annoying. So um, yeah, just try, try to not do what I just did. Just hold on to that little paper piece for your dear life. As you're marking the middle of the eye, you can also go for like top and the bottom part of the eye if you want to get the height correctly. And then for the mouth, I wouldn't suggest to like poke through the entire thing. That can look messy very quickly. But on the Pachimari, you have three high points of the mouth, right? You have the middle part, and then you have the left and the right corner of the mouth. So just poke into each corner and then the top one and then that little bend you can still just do freehand afterwards. I'd also mark the very bottom of the mouth so you know exactly just how far down it goes. You can use your tools or anything available to you to kind of measure it as well. Like if just like I you're losing track of your paper um, then you can just like start measuring it. So I use the top of my, my, my needle, my pokey tool and just I'd uh, with the help of this um, this drawing I just kind of eyed how how much I need the spacing down etc yeah and then afterwards you can just kind of freehand dot the lines but don't dot them too deep into the material because later on you will have to fix it and it's actually a little annoying to fix uh, if you went a little too deep with that kind of stuff so yeah we just want to avoid this altogether the next step is to clean this up. Now we want to start really drawing that face on. I'm starting with the mouth because that's just so much easier to start off. We want to arrange the eyes based on the mouth. So we can really align the eyes correctly once we know where the mouth is going, whereas the mouth is just so much more work and it's going to be harder to fix. Anyway, so I'm starting with the mouth. You can start with whatever, but I, I feel personally it's a lot easier. Uh, I want to not just have it drawn on. I don't want to just line work. I want to actually um, carve it out so it actually goes inside the mouth. Uh, so we have a little bit of a 3D effect. Now you can use any kind of tool which allows you to kind of scoop some of the material out. I'm uh, suggesting like the, the top bit from um, a ruler, for example, could work. Uh, or a toothpicks are a great tool for this kind of work. Also for the poking work, toothpicks work phenomenally well. I've used a lot of those in the past as well for my sculpting and yeah you just want to start drawing the little the little three you know uh, for the mouth uh, make sure that that is all in shape then you do the outlines for the bottom part and then once you got all the lines correct you can go a little deeper on those lines and then you can start scraping out the middle section so as you can see we're pretty much almost done with um with the outlines of the mouth which means that we can start the process of uh, taking out the extra material to just give this little face a little bit more depth, a little bit more character. And yeah, I mean, it's a 3D model, right? So that's, that's kind of where we want to. Uh, you can use your ruler for this. You can use your sculpting tools or um, toothpicks. As I said, there's a lot of different tools you can use for sculpting. You just have to see whatever works for you. 
One more also a reminder for the entire process, be mindful of what you touch. I'm trying to purposely only touch areas where I know it won't be a big issue when there is a, 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 a dent. So I'm using the very bottom of the scalp and then I'm using these two fingers for kind of the top bit since like this part on top of him, like this is where there is an indenture anyway. So I feel like that's an easy fix. There is also not much going on up there. So in case the dent is going too deep, I can add extra material and blend that in later on. Like that shouldn't be a huge issue. That is definitely workable. It's definitely doable. So once you're done scraping out the material, just take anything you can like back of a brush to kind of smooth out the surface you just worked on because if you leave it messy it's gonna be all stuff you need to clean up so I like to work as clean as possible so just smooth out all the stuff on the inside of the mouth but this way you also get a better idea of where you're at in the scalp right like is this if, if you don't do it proper in the first try you never really know what it's gonna look like until you actually clean it up and once you clean it up and you see like oh this is wonky you're like oh this doesn't work it's gonna be harder to fix once you've already done all the work around it as well, right? I don't know if any of this made sense, but it made a lot of sense in my head. So, <laughs> so this is what I said. Anyway, so yeah, you wanna do some clean work and you can always go back to it, you can always revisit and also you can always fix it. If we're looking at the mouth right now and you're not happy with the shape of it, or you feel like ah, I, it's just, it's like not aligned or it became too big. Like every once in a while you just remove too much material and then you're like, well, eh, and now what? Um, it's really not a problem. You can you can just uh, nip some of your material uh, out of the bigger piece. You just warm it up first. That's really, really important. You don't ever want to put cold material onto your existing scalp because if you do that, then you know it's just not going to blend very nicely. So once you got that nice and warm, you kind of shape it into roughly the right size and then you're just going to start attach this to the hole, which is currently the mouth. And then you can, with your fingers, like start blending over it. And you can really blend this in. You won't even notice that there has ever been a mouth. Um, I actually had to do that in this scalp with the eye. I think it was the, the right eye. Just didn't look right. I think it was either too far down or up. I can't remember. Something was droopy, something was off. So somewhere in the process, I actually had to redo it. So I just covered it with a little bit of Super Sculpey, I blended it and then I just tried to copy the eye from the other side and honestly second try every once in a while looks even better so every once in a while when you make a mistake and you go like oh no I have to do all the work again somehow uh, there is muscle memory in what you're doing right so you because you've already gone through the process, you've already did the mouth once, uh, you already have a learning experience. You already made some little mistakes which you're not happy about. So sometimes the second time around, it actually looks even better. So sometimes it's a blessing in disguise when you're messing something up. How often did I say sometimes? Did someone count? Because it felt like a lot as I was saying it. It was like, I don't have a substitute for that word. So I'm just gonna keep on using it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so you just wanna, um, neaten up the mouth make sure that you're happy with it and once more i of course went with the vanilla happy face but be creative i want to see what you guys are coming up with is it gonna frown is it gonna like stick a little tongue out like there's so many um things you can really do with a pachimari you would think that such a simple little creature um is not quite as uh, versatile I guess but they are you can go so many places with them it's actually really really fun to customize your own Pachimari at the end of the video I'm actually going to show you a few drawings I did uh, in order to just give you some examples of how you want to or how you could uh, kind of customize your Pachimari they make great gifts as well uh, also uh, worth note uh, noting at that point is that Super Sculpey once hardened once you were baking it you can drill through it you can uh, you can use, uh, as I call it, like sanded. So there is a lot of work you can still do. For that, it needs to be correctly baked though, because otherwise it's very brittle. So if you're drilling it, it could break. But hey, honestly, if I would have done that sculpt like prior to Christmas, I would have just made Christmas Pachimari and that would have been my ornaments. Maybe just do that for next Christmas. That's a, that's a solid Christmas tree uh, idea, isn't it? It's definitely something different. Definitely something worth explaining to grandma. I was like, why is there onions with tentacles on my Christmas tree? I was like, ah, oh, grand, you wouldn't understand. Or maybe she would. 
Well, actually, mine would actually. <laughs> maybe, maybe she would. I'd, I'd be able to explain it to, him, uh, to her and she'd be absolutely thrilled because she's the greatest. Grandma, I love you. Um, anyway, quick shout out there for grandma. <laughs> uh, we're moving on to work on the eyes and um, it's important here that you don't just like poke holes in it. You actually have to scoop out some of the material because otherwise you're just gonna stretch everything as the material has nowhere else to go, right? So you would just kind of start stretching out the face a little bit. So after you did a little dent with um, the back of your paintbrush or your sculpting tool, once you once you really marked where you want it, this is where you want to take a little bit of it out. Now, the eye socket doesn't need to be as deep as the mouth. Like the mouth should definitely be the deepest of those all, but the, the eye socket, just it definitely needs to have a dent uh, going inward. I played around, uh, you, which you will see a bit later in the video, I did play around with uh, trying to make it uh, pop out, like actual eyeballs, but that looked all sorts of off, like that was not it. So I had to take those eyeballs out again and just go from there. So, uh, but once more, you know, like there's so many do-overs, like this, this material just allows you to be very creative. It's basically like the, the oil paints of clay sculpting, if that makes sense. Since oil you can, that's a forgivable medium technically, as you can just work over it and over it and over it. Now, as you can see, one of the eyes is slightly wonky. Um, I did not like it. I'm gonna continue working with it for a little bit, thinking that I can fix it, but reality is I couldn't fix it. So I had to fix it, fix it by actually applying more material. But uh, it sometimes it'd be like that, you know? Sometimes it be like that. But uh, work away, take your time, don't rush it. However, for the sake of you wanting to craft along, you can also slightly rush it and then just go back after we're done with this segment and you can do the finishing touches before you put it in the oven. That's usually what I do anyway. I take the entire tray uh, out to the oven, which is preheating. And as it's preheating, I'm doing the final touches, like I'm bringing all my tools to the kitchen and I'm just doing some final touch-ups uh, so that the last thing I did was not touching it. So you don't have like my actual fingerprints onto um, on on the on the figurines or on the sculpts. So yeah, you can you can still fix some little things up here and there uh, later on. So don't worry about that. But try to be as accurate as you can the first um, the first time around because you're just saving yourself some work and heartache too. So yeah, but I'm taking my good time with this because you know um, I wanted I wanted you to uh, to see it. <laughs> So since uh, since I had to share the end material, I uh, or no, I was allowed to share the end uh, product of it or the end material of it. That's why I of course wanted to get it right the first time around. So I took my extra time with literally everything. Um, we're now doing the the cute little cheeks, which is something I just absolutely love. Um, those again, big question, do you want them to go in? Do you want them to go out? There's many different ways you can go about it. Um, maybe you don't want them showing at all in the actual sculpt. Maybe you just want to add them with the paint later on. You can do that too. I just kind of like to have some sort of an effect uh, on these kind of things. That's why a lot of the detailing work, rather than just painting them onto your sculpture, it really does make a difference if you kind of added them with some sort of texture already. So that way there's just a little bit more to your sculpt. And also you don't necessarily have to actually paint over your sculpt at the end, you know, like you can also just um, hand them out as is and then other people can like paint them. Maybe you have kids, maybe you just want to sculpt stuff and then let your kids paint them, which is such a fun activity for everyone. Uh, I, I imagine no one's ever done that with me, but I would enjoy that if I were a kid. Actually, I'm an adult and I would still enjoy people just giving me stuff to paint. I guess Warhammer is my thing. <laughs> Speaking, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? Um, anyway, so yeah, just as you're working um, with all those uh, little facial details, just think about what you want to do with the sculpt afterwards. Like if you prefer to just draw the entire face on, you can do that too. Like any of the detail work I'm doing right now, you can skip it all together and you can literally just uh, take take the sculpt as was, make sure that it is really nice and neat, and you pop it in the oven. And then you're just gonna draw on all the details, okay, a very steady hand in drawing. You can just do that and it would still look really cute. I just think there is this little extra added when you're actually sculpting the facial, uh, facial expression too. And I mean, this one's easy too, right? 
but the onion doesn't even have a nose there's not so much you have to worry about so uh, it's it's more on the simple side but sometimes simple is uh is harder right so now um i'm not happy with the uh the the, the cute cheek i don't know how is that even called the, the cheek blush yeah it's, let's go with that one the cheek blush on one side was slightly off in fact the entire eye on that side was slightly off so i had to rework that side several times over but that didn't really make the the whole thing any any less nice in the end so don't be scared about those kind of mistakes if you don't like it like really really don't 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 despair it uh it's all fixable everything's fixable this is such a forgiving medium it honestly is uh if you think about just uh, doing normal traditional drawings that's really painful all right like one wrong stroke i i work a lot with ink and one single wrong stroke um you have to literally start the entire artwork again from scratch because you just can't fix it like there's only a very few things you can actually do i sometimes sit here with scalpels trying to like chip ink off of my drawings if i'm using white ink or like white out that sometimes kind of works but it's definitely a little messy so it's like not ideal whereas if you're drawing with photoshop a lot when you have the back button right you can just like undo we and if you're very used to a uh, digital drawing and digital art in that in that sense um not being able to do that makes it really punishing it's really punishing it also helps you focus a little extra because you know exactly that any any slip up it's doom <laughs> the worst it's like a whole days of work can just be ruined by one wrong stroke ah the panic i feel it it's it actually i feel dread right now just talking about it but that is not the case with your skull there is so many do-overs there's so much you can just fix and, and add and remove and you know just be creative with so overall as um as upsetting as it can be when you mess something up um, it's always a learning experience and it's definitely fixable at least when you're sculpting stuff with super sculpty so uh, kudos to that material really I'm still chipping away work on the eyes and then the next thing we want to do of course is going to be the face now or when I say the face it's like this circle with this one I already wasn't sure if I should even mark it or if that's just something I should be drawing because if you're looking at the Pachimari it, it doesn't really look like it's standing out. It's, it, it looks like it's just a seeming transition from, from the, the kind of eggshell um, of the onion to the white of the actual face. But I decided to mark it anyway, just to give it that little extra depth. Um, but honestly, either way it will work for you. So once you've finished all your cute little uh, blush cheeks, uh, once you finish the eyes and you're happy with them and of course the mouth and you make sure that everything looks well aligned and proportionate, you can move on to um, carving out the face, I guess. Well, I guess, yeah, the, the frame, the, the face frame. Let's, let's go with that. Um, I was thinking about a lot of different ways of doing it. One was just like a literal, just very thin straight line in. And then I also thought like, maybe I want it like to to peel back a bit so it's more like the face coming out and here's the rest of the onion so like peeling back if that makes sense that was also an option so um in my head i played around with it quite a bit but then i wasn't really daring enough to play around with it on the skull because at this point we're almost done with the face already and we we're happy with how the face looks like right so at this point if we start messing around too much too close to the face chances are if we're fixing up the outside border of it we might also remove or warp something from the face and that would be a terrible shame after all the work we've already put into that so um sometimes it might be worth it for you to um just take a little bit of extra uh sculpting material you have and work on that you know like whatever idea you have which you're not sure if it's gonna turn out right or if it's gonna look good just use your extra clay and work on that to try it out like think of it like your scribble paper uh since like that doesn't matter right so you can just do that and once you came to um came up with something you like you can now transfer that onto your actual scalp which i'm doing right now with the face of or the face frame 
of my little Pachimari. And for that, once more, I'm using sculpting tools, but as you can see, you can also very much just take out a ruler or anything else, which is just like a very thin, straight kind of thing. Preferably maybe a little pointy, but definitely straight. Uh, so you can really get those lines right. Um, anything will do. Just play around with what you have at home and see whatever works for you. So it is a bit tedious work to get all the line work really, really nicely aligned and clean. But once you've done with that, there's just one more thing to do to finish up your Pachimari. And that is the fine line detail work on your arms slash legs slash tentacles. Um, um, yeah, that's this very line I'm talking about. This one you can pretty much freehand. There is no point in like cutting out anything. So all you want to do is get like maybe a needle and just try to do it in one nice fluent motion so that it really like flows with with the, with the tentacle arm, I guess. Uh, you just want to either start at the top or the bottom, like whatever feels more comfortable to you. And you just want to like draw it up. And honestly, it doesn't need much force with that material. Like if you have something very pointy, uh, such as like an actual needle, um, it won't take much for you to actually carve out anything or, or like shape anything into this material. So be mindful of that because once again, this is just supposed to be a line. It's not supposed to be quite that deep. Oops, I'm dropping my clay. <laughs> it's supposed to be a line. It's not supposed to go like super, super deep. Uh, like for example, with my face frame, I felt in hindsight, maybe it was a little too deep. Maybe it would have done for me to just make one very thin line. That could have worked too, but I was already too deep in and there was no way of going back without ruining the little face which i actually liked so i was like no nah, let's just let's just roll with it you know sometimes you just gotta roll with it but with the with the tentacles this is just like very very detailed little fine line work which we were trying to achieve so yeah don't go too hard on it uh you can also just use a very very thin um um knitting needle maybe did it come in that thin probably because you just want to have it either like a, an actual line or just like an like indenture a little bit just to kind of mark where the transition of color is since the bottom color of the Pachimori is a dark green and the top one will be a brighter green so um, in case you're not painting it at the end it might be nice for you to be able to differentiate like where we are just like any extra detail can be very nice Every once in a while, every extra detail is also just a detail too much. So it's very easy to overload something, even more so when it's something that simple. But I felt personally that we needed this line. And I'm happy with how the line uh, turns out here. I, I did go a little deeper just based on my face frame being on the deeper side in terms of line work. So I kind of wanted the whole thing to be cohesive and to kind of match. So that's why I went with the depth I went. Uh, make sure that your line doesn't get too close to the suction cup. Obviously on the top bit of your tentacle, it will be a little bit closer as you can see. Uh, suction cup there will be like pretty much right by the line. However, you definitely want to you don't want it to get muddy there, right? So you want to have a very clear differentiation between here's a suction cup, here's a part of the tentacle, here is that line work. So just try to to work with some space. If you don't want to freehand it like I did, which I understand, like maybe you're not that comfortable with it, um, you can also just kind of dot it, like very thinly dot it. That will do as well and then afterwards you can follow the dots and make the line based on the dots you did. That might help you just for your confidence maybe do it with one tentacle and then uh with the other ones you can just you know try to do it in one big motion with this work is of course the issue um like i said before right if you're working if you're doing line work really close to something you already you've already finished just like the suction cups because we've already finished them in shape and everything so we don't really want to touch them but if you're working so close to them with the line work in case you have to erase your line work and work over it that means you have to blend those lines you've already done and by blending it you will always kind of warp things a tiny little bit uh, if you're not too careful so if you don't have the right tools or the most dainty fingers of all time it might be that by means of blending those lines, you also alter the suction cups and the rest of the tentacles, which kind of would mean that you may or may not have to redo that work as well. I had to do some touch-ups on my suction cups at the very end, so I just kind of like um, 
had to reshape them a little bit using my tools just because every once in a while with the line work it got a little too close so I tried to spread it out so I tried to blend it in so yeah that you just got to be mindful that there is always like stuff around what you're doing which your current work can influence if that makes sense so just be careful don't rush it that's the most important thing do not rush the process it takes as long as it takes and if your pachimari isn't finished by the end of my segment don't worry <laughs> in germany they say gut ding will weile haben which just means good things take time which i think is literally just what i said before so i don't know why i had to repeat the gym the german slang of it slang no phrase there we go my god it's been a long day and a lot of talking anyway uh we are almost done there's really just finishing touches as we continue doing the line work on each and every single one of those tentacles making sure that we're not really altering the suction coast making sure that we're not altering the actual shape of the um tentacles although if that is the issue if one like started like straightening out a bit that is an easy one to fix like that is something you can fix really really easily very conveniently so you don't have to worry about that also at any point of time feel free to just go back to previous work which you've done and 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 fix it and change it a little bit because every once in a while you're like you know you're stepping back you're looking at the finished piece and go like oh that thing i did before which i really liked don't like it anymore so, so just don't be scared to go in there but think twice before going in there because it may affect parts around it so you just have to make mindful changes i guess is what i'm saying but we are pretty much almost where we want to be with this sculpt at this point we're just kind of playing around so i thought like maybe just like in my drawing i want to have it like an actual top of the onion you know like that little where the sprouts are coming out so i was like oh maybe that's a nice little detail so i added that in and then i looked at it and was just like no no i don't like it so i fixed it and i was i was brave enough i was bold enough to do that because i knew if i'm doing something up here i can work with it and i can uh, undo that kind of uh, alteration easily without affecting the rest of the tentacles the rest of the face uh, of course be mindful that you don't just press it down uh, now that i'm looking at it again actually it's kind of cute to have the the onion sprouty piece on the top but uh i removed it anyway in the end for whatever reason so there it went so once you're done with the line work on the tentacles and all the other kind of bits and bobs you felt like you need fixing if you're happy with the sculpt it can now finally go into the oven make sure that everything is exactly how you want it because you cannot change it once it's baked and firmed up there is no going back so you really want to make sure that your sculpt looks exactly how you want it to look at this point just put it down onto whatever surface you want to bake it on that should be either a normal like baking tray uh, definitely not like a, a griddle or something like just, it needs to be a, a, a flat surface of either metal or um, glass that works too so you can definitely use a glass baking form anything which is safe to bake in the oven of course um, put it on a flat surface I always put it on a tiny little bit of aluminum foil as well I just love aluminum foil apparently I just use it for everything in sculpting so yeah I just I just put it on that just so it doesn't stick to anything and then you can put it into the oven to harden up and this is the most exciting and terrifying part all in one uh, you want to make sure to preheat your oven at 275 Fahrenheit that is 130 degrees Celsius and if you worked on this scale and you made the inside out of aluminum foil so the head is filled uh, about this much like the, the, the face width and, and height um, I suggest you're gonna stick to 15 to 16 minute bake uh, if you bought super sculpy there should be baking instructions on the very packaging uh, I know they can be a little different depending on what sculpty you're using um, I felt like about 15 minutes per quarter of an inch of thickness which is about six millimeters and I don't think we really went over this much here maybe in the very middle section um it might be a little bit thicker but i don't really think that matters however i can only hope that you stay with it like just take those 15 minutes of your day 
and stay where you are don't walk away too far like you don't want it to brown you don't want it to bubble up because that can happen if you over bake it and there are parts of that sculpt which can be a little thinner like again the tip of the tentacles are on the thin side so you don't want them to burn whilst the rest of the sculpt is not um yet completely baked stick with it turn the oven light on stay with your little pochi mari until the very end don't leave it alone don't leave it unsupervised and once the time is up you can take it out of the oven make sure to use your oven gloves for that and uh yeah you just let it cool down all the way and once it's cold you can finally touch it you can finally see how it turned out is it baked all the way through or not and obviously because um like I for example I work in a cat household so they are there's dust and cat hair and all sorts of stuff somewhere uh, worked into my clay uh, that's why I will be painting this at the very end just to make sure that you know no one can still see that but this is how you will sculpt a little pachimari now I did tell you that you can get really creative with that and you should definitely try to customize your pachimari to just really make it your own and now super unbiased since i do work for the overwatch league i of course like my pachimaris to be super involved in everything i do on a daily and that is of course um you know overwatch league team pachimari so i designed a few of them just to see how they would look like how would a chengdu hunter pachimari look like clutching to its little panda friend or our um very confident san francisco shock with the beanie on uh, there is just no limit to how you can customize your pachimari and they're just so much fun to make and honestly after you made one or two of those you kind of a pro like eventually you're just like busting out onion heads left and right there is no stopping you so uh your christmas tree is going to be filled up in no time that reference only made sense if you watched all the way through this segment because i think i mentioned that two minutes into the video anyway <laughs> um it's been great fun to craft with you guys thank you so much for joining for this segment i hope that you guys share your creations with me i just can't wait to see what you guys are coming up with so feel free to send me your pachimaris via twitter or any other platform i'm on i just really would like to see what you guys made at home together with me during this segment so that's it for me thank you so much for watching and i hope all of you have a wonderful blizzcon Nein.